Our developing years as humans are something that are at once terrifying, exciting, hilarious, and eye-opening. It's a time period that will help define who you are, where you're allowed to go crazy, where you're allowed to make mistakes, to live life as if it was going out of style, and more often than not, make awful fashion choices that you'll look back on and cringe hard at. And as you grow, your tastes will change. You'll look at life in a different way, and you'll likely find things that you loved back in the day simply do not hold up today, video games included. So what we're going to do, and with all of the nostalgia tint rubbed from our eyes today, is look at some video games that we absolutely adored as jubilant, rose-faced youths, but now, for reasons that I shall explain, are best left alongside the memories you have of getting an embarrassing boner in French class and then being called to the front. With this in mind, I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 video games you loved as a teen but should never play again. Number 10. Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball Jiggle bones, chest hams, the wobble pots, breasts are everywhere in video games, and thanks to developers of anime titles and directors who love mountainous mammaries, we have a slew of games that are packed to the rafters with pixelated lady pairs. And some would argue that leading the charge are developers Tecmo, who became known for their, um, realistic jiggling breasts. Honestly, ladies, or should I say the three ladies that watch this channel, would such a jiggle be damaging in real life? Please let me know. And the culmination of all of this has to be Dead or Alive Extreme Beach Volleyball, a surprisingly well-made volleyball game that's nevertheless a shameless excuse to titillate horny teenage oiks. An entire department was devoted to engineering the game's breast physics, and while developer Team Ninja at least had the decency to give players a solid sports title amidst all the sexiness, this is a game that you never want to be caught playing nowadays. And I'm saying that as a man who owns all of these titles, I mean titles. Trust me, I've never shut off a game quicker than when my missus sees me playing this, and that is with good reason. Number 9. Mortal Kombat Hey now, hey, hey now, put it down, put it down. Yes, the 1992 Mortal Kombat game birthed an iconic media empire and will always have its place in history for that reason, but if we're being honest, the original game does not hold up well like at all. Compared to the decidedly superior Mortal Kombat 2 released the very next year, the original Mortal Kombat was relatively charmless and a forgettable one once you got past the photorealistic, well at least at the time photorealistic visuals, and of course the highly controversial teen-baiting bloodletting. The combos were non-existent and battles were boiled down to low step, move forward, attempt uppercut, fail, cry, go home. Don't get me wrong, the kernels of what made this series truly great in the later installments are definitely here, but it lacks the over-the-top personality that we know and love today. Number 8. Conker's Bad Fur Day Again, I know it's sacrilege to talk about hating on a beloved title like Conker's Bad Fur Day, but what you remember as being an uproariously funny, jaw-droppingly crude and gloriously self-aware parody platformer is, unfortunately, incredibly tame by today's standards. With its knowing send-ups of classic movies like Saving Private Ryan, Aliens and Terminator 2, Conker managed to lampoon the biggest names in such a way that it made him stand out from the crowd of copycat platformers. But if you're tempted by the prospect of revisiting the game on the Rare Replay collection released back in 2015, here is some advice. Don't. Returning to Conquer over 20 years later reveals just how far platformers have come since 2001. The camera is awkward, the difficulty swings wildly between being so easy a child could play it and so frustratingly hard that you figure the game's devs actually hate you, and it all boils down to a game that once led platformers and now is falling so far behind even acceptable standards. Also, given how commonplace meta-humor is nowadays, its self-awareness doesn't carry the same charm it did in the past. But I will say this, a giant poo enemy will always be funny. Number 7. GoldenEye007 if you grew up in the 90s, there's a strong chance that you've got fond memories of playing 007's ludicrously entertaining local multiplayer suite. However, while its map design, weapon choice, and game modes might have absolutely wowed you as a kid, things haven't held up so well for other areas of the game. For example, its pacing is molasses slow, and the frame rate runs at 007 frames per second in places. And you know what? Let's drag up that age-old argument. The N64 controller is unwieldy and doesn't feel right for this game. Yes, I said it. Sure, it was great for FPS titles at the time, but thankfully we have moved on from that. What it felt like was less like you're in control of James Bond and more like you're pushing and shoving him down corridors. Over 20 years since its release, this is a game 
game that unfortunately, like many in the same position, doesn't hold up well. It's still rightly considered as a stone-cold masterpiece and what it achieved at the time, but it's a shame that Bond is a bit of a chore to play. I do hope that this gets a remaster someday, because with modern controls, this could well be the be-all and end-all to the FPS question. Number 6. Enter the Matrix Enter the Matrix was released at the height of Matrix fandom and was a brilliant bit of cross-promotion, filling the gaps between the second and third games and a slam dunk of action and over-the-top spectacle. Oh, and it also had Monica Bellucci making out with almost everyone in a bit of fan service so on the nose that it almost broke it. However, revisiting the game in more recent years revealed just how much of a rushed, thrown-together hodgepodge this truly was. Even if you can accept the fact that Neo himself isn't a playable character, the gameplay is so arcadey to a fault and seemingly borrows the leftovers that Max Payne didn't think worthy to hold on to, and thanks to a frantic camera, can be annoyingly difficult to get through. The sheer clunk and chunk of this game turns what should be a power fantasy experience into something of a nightmare. If you want a slightly better effort, then check out Path of Neo, which, while still being wonky as all hell, benefited from a longer development time and allowed you to play as Neo, aka the one thing that many players wanted. Number 5. Mario Kart 64 Will I ever stop crapping on your favourite kids' games? No, I am the mean jewels in this list format today, and I'm going to step on all of your toys. Mario Kart 64, like GoldenEye, is one of the most iconic multiplayer console games of all time, because anyone who grew up with an N64 doubtless spent hundreds of hours playing this thing with their friends on the couch. However, while MK64 is decidedly more playable than GoldenEye these days, in large part thanks to its more simplistic controls, it's also aged far more egregiously than many fans are prepared to accept. Except. For starters, the sprite carts in a 3D environment are an absolute eyesore, but worse still, the tracks actually feel so empty and are lacking in detail, especially when compared to contemporary games that they might even be considered dull. I know, weird. I mean, forward your salty mail to the pits of hell where I clearly live. Side note, I do actually think this is a really fun game, but when you're asked to read a script, you read the bloody script. Number 4. Grand Theft Auto 3 Grand Theft Auto 3 is one of the most important and acclaimed video games of all time, I'm not going to do a second one, and a milestone for gaming which helped popularise open-world sandbox game design, and it also elevated the GTA series to a monolithic level of popularity. It was also likely a game that a teenage version of you remembers well, as it was edgy as all hell, allowing you to murder and commit mayhem until it was time for turkey twizzlers and potato faces for tea. But playing this today is sometimes an exercise in frustration, as thanks to the shooting controls, or what the game tells you are shooting controls, this game can feel entirely unfair in play. Places. Hell, things get even worse when you realise that there's no mid-mission checkpoints and the fact that there's a lack of a pause map menu. It's a massive chore that feels punishing rather than playful. Plus, let's not forget the one thing that we never knew how much we took for granted until we played something that took it away, the bailout that was added in Vice City. My god, was it so annoying to see your car go up in flames only to have to ride that thing to hell. Do yourself a favour and let the memories be good ones. Don't go back and tarnish them. Number 3. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater Jesus Christ, originally this list had Final Fantasy VII on here, and I'm not going to stand here and lie to you kids about hating on that game, so instead I'm going to talk about a series that once flew so high, but then came crashing down whilst flipping its audience the bird, the Tony Hawk's Pro Skater series. If we're being brutally honest, this game really didn't hit the ground running until the second and third titles, and that was down to the inclusion of the manual and the revert, both of which took the arcadey trick-scoring gameplay to new and unparalleled heights. So what do you think would happen with these moves stripped away? Well, you'd have Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 that's actually quite boring all across the board when you come back to it. The locations weren't wild, the graphics looked like you're squinting at a bunch of ants from a plane, and really the only thing going for it is the soundtrack. Number 2. Tomb Raider there's no refuting the legacy of the original 1996 Tomb Raider game. It was a pioneering action-adventure title which created one of the most iconic and beloved heroines in the history of the medium, Lara Croft. And though any self-respecting PS1 or Sega Saturn owner had to have Tomb Raider, the game's cumbersome and sluggish tank controls, ineffective camera, awkward platforming and fiddly combat aged pretty poorly in the years that followed. Mercifully, the more recent rebooted Tomb Raider titles have deferred to a slightly less pointy sweater ham character, and while it might seem that it's chasing Uncharted nowadays rather than leading the pack, it does seem to have fixed a lot of the controls that hampered the series for a long old while. And number 1. Silent Hill 
Horror is perhaps one of the toughest video game genres to withstand the test of time, and while the first Resident Evil is lovingly ribbed for its goofy one-liners and general silliness, that game has endured regardless because the tone was always akin to that of a schlocky B-movie. Silent Hill, on the other hand, took itself far more seriously, and to its credit is one of the most atmospheric horror games of its era, jam-packed with shocking body horror violence and an unpredictable, unsettling narrative. But you're better off sitting tight with those terrifying childhood memories of playing the game because in 2019, Silent Hill's horrendous controls and janky graphics are immensely off-putting. Silent Hill 2 was a massive step up for the series in nearly every way, and if you're thinking of taking a trip down the memory lane with the original, ask yourself this. Is that actually fog or just nostalgia blindness? Because you might not like what you find lurking within. And there we go, those were 10 video games you loved as a teen, but should probably never play again. I hope that you enjoyed that, my friends, and remember, it's just a bit of a silly list. I know that a few of you on there are probably going to be smashing away the keyboard saying, I don't agree with this, this is the best game I've ever played, and you know what, that is fine. That is absolutely fine. I'm allowed to have my opinions and you're allowed to have yours. Don't come up to me at a convention and tell me I'm wrong. You know what, my friend, my differing opinion to yours is not going to change the way that I want to end this message with a bit of love from me to you. I hope you, yes, you listening to this list go out there and have a great day because you deserve love happiness and success we all do and i hope that you are treating yourself as fairly as you possibly can